are we on camera? Is it filming? Um, from what I remember, I, I don't remember that far back, but I can tell you what my mother said what happened. It's kind of gross. She found me in the bathroom drawing pictures on the wall <laughs> with my poop. Classical artists, of course, it's like so cliche. It's Vincent Van Gogh. Yeah, it's my favorite. I like the way his paint strokes are. It's not perfect. It's it's kind of whimsical and it's like a dream. So my favorite work of art is Starry Night because I am drawn to anything like solar system, universe, stars, just something about them. I don't know what it is, but Starry Night is my favorite because it's different. He made his own style. like. Well, when he was alive, I don't think he even sold anything, did he? Yeah, he never sold anything because they thought it was weird. They are like, what is this crap? You know, and then he dies and they're like, oh, he's so amazing. So it's like he's not appreciated in his own time, which I feel like many of us as artists feel that way. I mean, elementary school, I remember, so you know the little name tags? on the desks that your teacher would write your name on whatever, it looks ugly. I remember somebody gave me a book, like for my birthday every year, everyone always gave me art supplies. They saw it before I did. And I took the name thing, piece of paper, I flipped it over and I drew my name in bubble letters with like a little guy with a mallet hitting like the last letter of my name. And so I remember doing that and then everybody wanted one. Oh yeah. That's just, if you don't hate your art at one point, then you're not an artist. We are our own worst critic. And, and how are you gonna know what you're good at until you know what you're like not good at or what you don't like until you try it. So, I went to hair school to get a trade. And during school, they would teach us how to use makeup. And we had like some sort of like photo shoot day. You had to storyboard it. And everyone's doing like a glamour stuff and like wedding stuff. And I wanted to do Day of the Dead stuff. From that moment, it's like another person I knew worked at a, another salon. And their salon does um, like the the hair shows, so like the Lawrence Brothers hair show, and they wanted to compete, and they really wanted to have an edge. So they were like, "Let's body paint some of the models." You've got two more questions after. This. <laughs> <laughs> we're good. So okay, so body painting actually taught me a lot. Um, it taught me what exactly I need to be prepared for stuff like that. Um, you know, how you should pack your kit, all the things that you should bring, and not just for body painting, but just like as a business person, cards, you know, all your tools, making sure you're safe and sanitary. So body painting and the whole freelance thing with face painting, hair, it all actually led me up to this point now. But even though I'm really good at hair, I don't like it doesn't fill my heart with joy <laughs> but doing that led me to face paint body paint which actually I made a lot more money doing that than doing hair and so that just taught me to be able to book gigs um, travel get everything packed learn how to set up know how to talk to people I think the main thing is as you're progressing is to stay open-minded um, and humble. I've seen it and people get, you know, they, they get good at something and then that's all they want to do.
do because that's what pays the bills and they're enjoying it but then they get comfortable and it happens a lot I mean everywhere and not just in the tattoo industry in the hair industry in the art industry like everyone gets comfortable doing something and but how do they grow as a person so with all the skills that you learned in the past you keeping that open mind will help you to learn something new things are always changing like or just certain things you know people are like hey you know I really want this tattoo and it's something that's right up my alley because of something I don't know I've painted or done everyone loves flowers so it's that's probably the number one thing everyone gets flowers so because I've painted so many of them I've drawn so many of them there's so many different styles you really got to find um, you know just what you're what you're good at and keep going because if you would have seen my artwork five years ago four years ago a year ago last month there are already improvements. You can't be closed-minded to that. And a lot of people are. But not everyone's like that. Like, not everyone who goes to a school is going to be a shitty scratcher. Any artist worth their salt or tattoo artist that wants to be taken seriously and professionally and travel the world and do something that they absolutely love will do what it needs to take to become professional, is my opinion. But yeah, I tell... I tell some people have thick skin granted I'm the most sensitive person ever I still you know have a toughness there are gonna be people that are gonna judge you hate you and critique every little thing about you <laughs> but I have a process and every artist does and it needs to be respected artists are emotional so emotional <laughs> and we have our ups and our downs but you know if it's not for heartbreak or you know the stress it's it pushes us Vincent Van Gogh look at all the the torment he had in his own head his own mental illness the whole thing with his ear like but he had some amazing work like everybody has a process not everyone understands it but artists understand artists 